This is a very interesting case, and this harkens back to something that I've touched on in a bunch of videos, which the police have talked about and some community activists too, which is uh, the laws in Chicago right now and uh, some of the decisions that are being made by some of the uh, politicians and the people in, in positions where they're responsible for bringing you know criminals to justice. And a lot of people feel like that's not always happening. And there's a Chicago mother now who is saying that she needs Kim Fox to call her because her son has not gotten justice. He was killed by a woman, and this was on camera, and nobody's in custody thus far at the time um, that the most recent update that I've seen on this story has come out. Now, by the time I drop the video, there may be another update. Hopefully, there is. Uh, Fox Chicago was reporting that a mother's left grieving with no one in custody after her son was fatally shot and it was caught on camera. The video has gone viral on social media. It's only 38 seconds long, they say, but it shows a 32-year-old named Jaleel Spencer on the ground after he was shot and, and a woman was seen running uh, back to a sedan. This shooting was on 47th in Michigan and it was back in March. And the mom says, is that the law in Chicago now? She says, can you just drive up and shoot somebody and then stand over them and unload in them? That's my question to the mayor, Kim Fox. Whoever needs to answer that. Uh, and this is according to his mother. So Chicago police described the shooting as a domestic related incident saying that Jaleel Spencer got into a physical altercation which led the offender to shooting the victim with her gun. So Spencer's mother showed other evidence related to the case from the day that her son was shot and killed and did not show a domestic dispute. So she's saying there was no domestic. Um, and she's saying she shot him once in his chest. Then she stood over him and shot him three more times in his back. She didn't have to kill him. Uh, the mom said he didn't do nothing. He was good. That man worked every day. That's according again to his mother. So the video evidence was handed over to police a week after Spencer's death. And his family can identify the woman in the video that pulled the trigger. So the family knows who the woman is. Uh, and they say, quote, my daughter, they know her. So when her hoodie fell off, we definitely knew it was her and her car, according to uh, the mom. So Spencer's mom said that she's been given the runaround. She said, quote, I need Kim Fox to call me now. So the Cook County State's Attorney's Office says that there's not enough evidence to move ahead with the case. And the mom says, you as a state's attorney had one job, and that was to prosecute her. You can't tell me that if that was your family member, would you be okay with that? Um, so again, that, that's according to the mom. The Cook County Medical Examiner's Office did rule Jaleel's death as a homicide back in March. And the state's attorney's office sent Fox 32 Chicago a statement, and here's what it is. They said, quote, after a thorough review, we concluded that the totality of the evidence was insufficient to meet our burden of proof to file criminal charges related to this incident. As prosecutors, we have both an ethical and legal obligation to make charging decisions based on the evidence facts, um, and we will review any additional information that's brought to us as we remain committed to the work of justice for those impacted by violence in our communities. So no prosecution yet. Uh, at least as, the, as far as the latest update that I've seen of this woman who shot this guy and then stood over him and shot him three more times. Now, again, the state's attorney said, you know, there was a, a domestic incident and the mom said there was no domestic and this was all on camera and the video has gone viral on, on social media. I cannot show the video because, you know, a video of somebody getting killed gets the video a strike, but uh, it's, it's all over social media. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section, man. This is, um, it's, it's been an ongoing thing that the mayor, um, Mayor Lightfoot at one point was, was blaming the state's attorney for and, and complaining about, and it started kind of a back and forth between the mayor and the state's attorney. And, and again, I'm not talking about Brandon Johnson. I'm talking about Mayor Lightfoot, the previous mayor, Mayor Lightfoot. Uh, a lot of the, a lot of the police and, you know, some of the people who work with the police have, have also complained uh, about this, that there's not enough prosecution in, in obvious cases where the person is obviously guilty. Um, there's been a lot of corruption in the Chicago Police Department in the past, and there's been a lot of, you know, wrongful prosecutions. And now, you know, we see the pendulum swinging the opposite direction, where there's a lot of people that are just like obvious, doing this obvious stuff. And not being prosecuted but you let me you guys let me know what you think though in the comment section man is there enough evidence on that video to convict or not and um is this something that's making chicago more dangerous or not because uh like i said a lot of people you know that uh that commit certain crimes you know they get put in jail there's a revolving door they get right back out and then they commit other crimes there's like repeat repeat offenders you know multiple times and 
some people are saying, well, they should have been prosecuted for the previous crime they committed. Then they never would have committed the second crime. Um, and you guys let me know, too, if you think that this is a, a political thing, if, if this is like something that's typical with Democrats or Republicans or what, you know, if you think this is something that uh, one or one of the other political party does more than the other. And if you've noticed patterns in that. So the most famous and, and most spotlighted by the media cases like this, uh, where somebody had done something and then got gotten let go. Well, one was Jesse Smollett, you know, who had basically uh, made the police spend a lot of money and, and manpower on nothing and then um, had been let go for that. Uh, but nobody died because of that. So it wasn't a, a situation where it cost life. Then there was another one that I covered, which was some four corner hustlers pulling up to a house and flaming the house on the west side. The people in the house returned fire and everybody was let go because of the law of mutual combat. Um, and Mayor Lightfoot had actually publicly complained about that. And that was the one that started the back and forth between her and Kim Fox. And, um, you know, Kim Fox had insinuated that the reason why she was receiving criticism and, and Mayor Lightfoot was receiving criticism for this was because they were black women. But a lot of the people, you know, like I said, level, leveling this criticism were themselves black politicians. Then you had an incident where, and this is actually chronologically prior to these other incidents, where Zach TV was killed and he was fleeing the scene. He hadn't committed any crime. He hadn't fired any shots. And he was murdered. And his killers were released and let go and were not prosecuted because of the law of mutual combat. So no justice for Zach TV's family. So uh, several high profile, and there's more. There's more incidents like this. So uh, you guys let me know what you think, though, in the comment section, man, because... Um, a lot of people, you know, have criticized the state attorney and a lot of people defending her have said that these criticisms are not because of her decisions, they're because of her gender and her race. And, you know, this stirs up a lot of beef between people in Chicago, back and forth, arguments and accusations and finger pointing and stuff. But um, Kim Fox is not running again for re-election. This is going to be her last term. Uh, I, I don't hate the woman. For anybody that, you know, interprets it like that, Constructive criticism and hate is two different things. A lot of people, you know, were accusing me of this when I had, had uh, criticized uh, Trap Lord Ross's coverage of No Limit, you know, and saying, well, you, you're hating on him. Constructive criticism is not hate. That's two separate things. Uh, nowadays, you know, sensitivity, oh, hypersensitivity is the norm. Um, there's a fine line between hate and that, though. Uh, now, a lot of people definitely cross that line when it comes to Kim Fox, but I'm not one of those people. I, I don't hate her at all, and I and I don't believe that I could do my do her job better than she does. I think I'd probably be a disaster if I was in that office. So I'm not saying you know that she's doing a bad job or whatever, but just uh, the people that are that are criticizing some of the decisions. There's a distinction to be made between criticizing decisions and criticizing the woman herself. Like I said, some people criticize the woman herself. Others criticize the decisions. Um, and that's part of the democratic process. I mean, that's fair. So you guys only know what you think, though, in the comment section, man. This is your boy, Winnie C. Report. I'm out.